Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. Today I have a fun project, or at least fun for me, maybe for you too. Let's find out together. Today I am making an ideology Halloween coffin with a few extra details signed yours truly. I must do a big thank you shout out to Sari, who owns Sari Stamping Studio. When I told her what I wanted to do, she was in and even sent me many extra ideology things to decorate with. You will find a link to the supplies I got at Sorry Stamping Studio in the description box below. So, let's dive in head first. So, let's start with this little bottle of zombie eyes because that is what I created first. I made different sizes of zombie eyes out of polymer clay and baked them in the oven. It was fiddly and they didn't come out perfect, but who's to say how perfect zombie eyes look anyway? To make the eyes look like they come from some crazy scientist's lab, I brought out my resin. This resin takes 24 hours to set, but that's okay. When working with resin you should have a well-ventilated room, gloves and probably goggles as well. It's also important to be super precise when you measure. To do this I need as much resin A as I need the hardener B. And I have these little bottles that I found on second hand. I use a popsicle stick to push the eyes into the bottles and I made different sizes of eyes because I wanted to fill the bottles with as many eyes as possible. When I filled my bottles with eyes, I start measuring the resin and hardener carefully. Then I pour the two together. At first the clear resin will look milky and white and as I stir very carefully it will clear up again and it's ready to pour. I pour the clear resin over my polymer clay eyes and stop the eyes from floating up by holding them down with my popsicle stick. I pour in three bottles and let them rest for at least 24 hours and to me they look like specimens preserved with formaldehyde. To add to the details I bring out a Tim Holtz and Sissix tag die set and cut a few of the smallest tag. Then I write zombie eyes on one tag and use the Tim Holtz Halloween rub-ons to add spookiness to the second tag. And then I use twine to tie the tags together to my solid resin filled bottles. Next I have this pack of Tim Holtz Halloween ephemera and in it I find a bunch of mini book covers, so perfect for my project. I cut mini book pages from a book with old text and hold the piles of pages together with clips. Then I put distress collage medium on one side that will be my spine in the books and when that glue is dry it's time to glue the book cover on to the pile and I only put glue on the spine this time too. When I'm happy with one mini book I ink up the rest of the covers and try to make them look old. Then I fold the book covers and wait for the glue on the other piles of book pages to dry. To add something extra and spooky to the book covers I bring out those Halloween rub-ons and choose words like poisons, elixirs and haunted as well as some small bats, spiders and skulls and I rub them on my book covers, the words on the spine so one can read the book names. Next I bring out my lumber embossing folder. I don't use it as often as one would think. Instead I emboss many many panels at the same time and use them as needed. I spray the cardstock with water and run it through my die cutting machine. I showed this process in the video before this so I sped this up. 
but I blend two grey distress oxide inks over the panels, swipe with black soot ink over the wood grains and soften the black by going over the panels with a brush and darkening the edges. And then I cut a few panels into thin strips of grey wood. From Sari I got this vignette coffin from Tim Holt and I cut a lid to the coffin from thick shipboard. Then I start gluing those weathered wood planks onto the coffin lid. This construction might prove a bit problematic later depending on what kind of crafter you are. When all my planks are glued in place, I cut off any excess hanging off the lid or door, and I do the same procedure on the other side as well. For the coffin, I bring out two distress paints in black soot and weathered wood. I pour them on my glass mat and start painting with the weathered wood grey paint first. Very messy, random and unprecise. Then I add the black soot and do the same procedure, but I lose, use less black and want to achieve an old grungy look to the coffin. For the inside I bought this Halloween worn wallpaper from Tim Holtz and I choose a couple of patterns in roughly the same colors, grey, green and black. I love these papers. I have cut all the pieces of worn wallpaper I need to cover the inside of the coffin. And I use this dress collage medium to both glue down and seal the paper. And I have this rubber spatula from Nuvo that works great to push air bubbles out and flatten the paper. It is fiddly and takes time, but I love what the papers do for my coffin. The whole inside of the coffin is now covered with paper and I think the papers look amazing. After having some caffeine input, I bring out a small brush and vintage photo archival ink. Archival ink is permanent and I use that little brush to add the brown ink to the corners and edges, giving them even more grunge. The coffin is grungy, but I want to take it a step further. I bring out a distress grit paste called Crypt. It's grey and have little specks of black in it. And I use my finger to smear a little of that Crypt paste here and there on my coffin. When it dries off camera, I went over the paste with the gelatos and distress crayons, as you will see in the final pictures. But just that Crypt paste gives so much spookiness to my coffin. Okay, so we're back with all my ideology decorations and I totally did the same as Tim Holtz. He uses an antique muffin tin to store little pieces and I happen to find one on second hand. I have a lot of pieces that I show here, but I will alter most of them to give them a little something extra. I feel like I'm rich getting to play with all these lovely little decorations. For the pumpkins I bring out my Uhuhu alcohol markers and add in the stripes, some shadows and some color variation for all of my pumpkins. I use three brown and orange markers to add details to the pumpkins. From a 
my pack of Halloween baseboards from Tim Holtz, I have this oval with an eye in the middle. So I take one of Tim Holtz's eyes, called Creepy Eyes, and glue one that fits in size over the eye in the center. I found metal spiders in my local craft store and gave one of them a messy coat of black soot paint. I give this little cute barrel a coat of weathered wood grey paint. I have these Christmas ideology snow globes but I have a plan for one of them and drill a hole in the base and paint it in silver. For the pumpkins I picked little twigs in the yard and cut them into mini pieces and use hot glue to glue the twig stems onto the pumpkins. I have this pack of ideology Tim Holtz Halloween adornments in metal and for some reason I have always loved the saying on one of them that says foolish mortals. I add black suit paint which is permanent when dry and before it dries I wipe off, off most of it so the words stand out more in black. I also have a pack of clear bubbles and I bought my first alcohol ink in willow green because alcohol ink can stain non-porous surfaces like glass or resin. I pour a bunch of drops of that willow green alcohol ink in a plastic cup and add the bubbles and shake the cup until they are covered with the ink. I do that a few times to build up color and then I pour them out on a paper towel to dry. Next we have that snow globe, but now I will focus on the glass globe. I bought my second alcohol ink, so now I have two, and I place the glass globe on a roll of washi tape, drop in that purple twilight ink, twilight ink and swoosh it around to cover the whole inside of the globe a couple of times before I leave it to dry. So here are all my mini books glued and dry and I add them to the pile of altered decorations. Next we are working on the door to the coffin again and I will use this new Tim Holtz Halloween stencil, some grit paste and black sparkle embossing powder. As you can see I added two wood strips to the outside of the door and I treat it with my anti-static powder tool. I mask off half of the stencil with post-it notes so I can have more control and push this dress grit paste through that roses and thorn stencil. Then I add that black sparkle embossing powder and let the paste and powder dry. While the first stenciling dries, I use the same stencil again on the lower part of the door and do the same as before. Then I let it all dry overnight without heating it yet to get a smooth result. It is now the next day and I use my heat tool to melt the black sparkle embossing powder. Had I heat set this yesterday the result would have been more bubbly, but if I let it dry I get a chance at a more smooth black decoration. Before I do anything more I ask my husband to help me attach a mini metal hinge to the coffin and the door. Next I bring out glossy accents because it's a strong glue that dries clear and shiny. I drill the hole in the bottom of the cauldron and add a piece of plastic inside and start gluing those green bubbles to the cauldron like bubbles from a wicked potion.
Next, I felt I needed more purple and silver for the snow globe that will star as a crystal ball. I bring out Distress Silver paint and Dilution Shimmer paint in crushed grapes and dab on the purple paint on the inside and use the silver paint to make splatters on both the inside and the outside of the globe. I have a piece of mummy cloth ribbon that Sari gave me and I smooshed two distress inks on my surface in a weathered wood and frayed burlap and smoosh the mummy cloth in the ink until I'm happy with the color. Next I cut two pieces of that mummy cloth ribbon and put them in one of my mini bottles. Then I add some bones that Sari also sent me from Tim Holtz sticking up from the bottle. So I want to light up my coffin and I have a strand of lights in lime green from Tim Holtz. I hate these kinds of hurdles because I kind of hate technology. But later off camera I will fiddle and use little pieces of that wallpaper to secure the lights in place without them showing too much. But now we're doing some collage on the inside of the door with that oval eye and other ephemera from that Halloween ephemera pack from Tim Holtz and I glue and seal the pieces with collage medium. Next I want a door handle so I use one of the black candy pieces Sari sent me and glue it on but I want a chain around the coffin so I add a spider over that candy piece so the links in the chain can hang off the spider legs closing my coffin. I also have drippy candles and candlesticks from Sari so I choose a small candle and glue it on a small candlestick. Then it's time to start decorating. I glue a jack-o'-lantern on the highest shelf and the cauldron on a second shelf I made from popsicle sticks. The lights are placed throughout the coffin shelves but I put a few extra lights in the jack-o'-lantern, the cauldron, the crystal ball and the barrel on the lowest shelf. I continue gluing things in place like the bottle of bones, the bottle of zombie eyes and then I start gluing down black candy canes, black candy and candy corn in the jack-o'-lantern. Next I glue down the pumpkins in and beside the barrel at the bottom and I also add a few candy corns from Tim Holtz. Then I add the candlestick with the drippy candle next to the cauldron. And then I start gluing down my mini books. I am so sorry for the footage, it was hard to craft and take video at the same time this time. I put one of Tim Holtz's skulls on one pile of mini books. Then I glue down an extra eye next to the bottle of zombie eyes and then I test the lights. I glue down the metal adornment saying foolish mortals on the outside of the door and off camera I added another creepy eye to the back of the doorknob spider. So the problem one might or might not have I spoke of before is that I can't fully close the coffin because of everything in it but to me it doesn't matter, I love this coffin anyway and the chain works well to hold it semi-closed. There are close-up videos with and without the lights coming up now because this ideology Tim Holtz Halloween coffin is finished and all that's left for me is to thank you so much for watching. I adore you. Until the next time. 
Happy Halloween Crafting!